poetry reading. Um, I'm going to be presenting an exhibition called Poesia de Protesta. It's a really special collection that we've been working at um, at the Verse Verse for a very long time. Before I get into that, I will introduce myself and the Verse Verse. My name is Ana Maria Caballero and I am a Colombian American poet and artist. I write in both Spanish and English, been publishing traditionally for a very long time, and I've always felt that poems were works of art and they needed to be transacted, collected, and exhibited as such. Um, and it wasn't until I encountered Web3 that I really felt that I found a way to do that. Um, and with two friends in the space, one of whom is here, Sasha Stiles, another one, Callan Iwamoto, we founded a collective called The Verse Verse, which is an NFT poetry gallery. And we've been at it for about a year now. It's been pretty incredible. Um, we've exhibited all over the world, literally, um, in the past year since we've launched, um, physically and in the metaverse numerous times. Um, we've had several collections, and today we're really, really honored to be launching our first collection in Spanish um, at Refraction in Miami. The collection is all written by women, um, all poems of protest, social, economic, gender, any form of protest. They were curated by Gladys Garrota, who is a Cuban art historian based in Havana, Cuba and she curated each poem um, with a different artist from all over. The artists are all genders, um, all nationalities. Um, I have a poem, for example, which she paired with a Russian photographer. Um, there's performance art, there's animation. The exhibition is live inside uh, this gorgeous building that Malcolm and Dina have so incredibly put together. Let's hear it for Malcolm and Dina. Really amazing. Uh, we're really, really grateful to launch with Refraction. Um, we were awarded a creative grant as well. So, um, you know, from the very beginning, this exhibition can only, it's been birthed by the Verse Verse and by Refraction. I'm also really excited to share that already there's been so much interest in this exhibition. We have confirmed showings in Spain in 2023 um, in Istanbul, Amsterdam, and Bogota, Colombia, and we are launching today. So we're hoping that this show will really go on the road and, um, and showcase poetry in different languages. We've done a lot of work with, with poetry in English, but we're also excited to, to feature different voices. Um, I will be reading um, two poems. Uh, the first is called Facil. I'll be reading in Spanish and English. We had a Colombian translator help us with these translations. The first poem is by actually a Miami-based poet who unfortunately could not make it. Uh, we were hoping she could come and read. Her name is Lenia Rodriguez Iglesia. She's a powerhouse here in the local community. And the poem is called Facil. A una mujer, tú la tocas, y ella tiembla, la escupes, y ella sale, empapada en saliva a una mujer, tú la puedes destruir. ¿Cómo la destruyes? Fácil, la tocas, y la escupes, la tocas, y la escupes, la tocas, y la escupes, entre una cosa y otra, le dices que de pronto has empezado a quererla, que simplemente la quieres y ya por último la escupes easy you touch a woman and she trembles you spit her out and she comes out covered in saliva you can destroy a woman how do you destroy her easy touch her spit her out touch her spit her out between one thing and another tell her that all of a sudden you have begun to love her. That simply, you just love her. And that's it. Finally touch her and spit her out. Amazing. Um, Elizabeth will read a poem and then I'll read one more and we will leave this for the, for the musical event that's coming. Hi everyone, thank you so much. I'm gonna read the English translation of a poem by Patricia Echeverra Lires. 
and the artist who interpreted this poem is Mariana Jachuzic. Um, and the poem is called Bittersweet Jam. Painful memories, slathered on toast, burnt by loneliness and shame. Coffee made of silenced wailing, drowned in fear. Breakfast of a disappeared woman. Next to a glass of rotting milk, the object of an unrequited desire, covered by a frayed and faded tablecloth, numbed into martyrdom to infinity. Thank you. This last poem I'll read is from my book, From Sunday to Sunday, um, which won uh, Columbia's National Poetry Prize a few years ago. I wrote it when I worked for, I worked for the government for four years in Colombia, in Bogota, um, handling mostly international press um, on matters related to drug trafficking. But under my boss, who was the vice president, um, we also had all the reconciliation issues um, because Colombia had signed an agreement, uh, a ceasefire with the paramilitaries. So we had the task of leading um, the reconciliation efforts, which basically consisted of finding and unentering the remains of lost loved ones and handing them back to the family. And that's how the cycles would be closed. And I accompanied the vice president on many of these trips where we, we would go to these camps in the middle of nowhere in Colombia, like very, very small towns, and hand back boxes with the remains of family members to their families. Um, and I wrote this during one of those, during one of those trips. Reconciliación. No sucede con bocas crecidas como tribunales, prensas paradas, flechas excitadas. No sucede con mil dedos suspendidos sobre un cuello, un solo cuello que oculta miles de huecos. Solo sucede narrado de lejos, como cinta polaca con financiación alemana. Camiones cuadrados, mujeres muy blancas, hombres más altos, otros continentes, libros publicados. Solo sucede cuando el cuento se cuenta como cuento. Había una vez un país montañoso donde vivía una joven llena de rumores. Desentierra aquí, decía, desentierra allá. El cuento, narrado en vivo, si abre con la muerte, se aleja como mito. Sucede pero solo al finalizar la cinta, los nombres rodando, cuando el palco se mira y se levanta callado. I'll read it in English. Reconciliation. It doesn't happen when the mouths open to swallow the tribunals, printing presses paused, arrows ablaze. It doesn't happen with a thousand fingers suspended on a single neck, one neck hiding 1,000 holes. It only happens when told from a distance, like a Polish film with German funding. Square trucks, paler women, very tall men, further continents, archived books, it only happens when the story is told as a story. Once upon a time in a mountainous country lived a woman full of rumors. Dig here, she said, dig there. The story, when told in present time, if it launches with death, slips away like myth. It happens, but only at the end of the film when the names stop rolling and the audience glances at each other before exiting in silence. Thank you all for coming, for listening. Sasha, I don't know if you want to come up. No?
Thank you, Malcolm. Dina, one more? I'll read, uh, I have them over there. <laughs> Do you want me to grab them? Okay. This one's by Catherine Bisquet. Um, she is uh, an amazing poet um, living in, in exile. And the artist is Sai Moon, the interpreted artist. Um, Por esta vida de discolo, sépase que como el platicerío al tronco se pega, un discolo desocupado es un helecho en potencia, comprobado con base en la genética plastidial. Un disco lo crece y se desarrolla según sus desvalimientos, carga con tus raíces y con esas otras cosas que te vertebran. Un mortero de mármol lo llevo a mis espaldas hacia la punta de una loma a vacilo, déjalo caer, volverlo a subir. En estos tiempos de discolo se me ocurre darle otras funciones. Un mortero puede dar forma, si acaso machacando, pero congruente. El mármol te dará el talante, una historia inmortalizada de losas cuadradas. Dejarlo caer. He aquí las desobediencias a las grandes estructuras sistémicas. Al ajo por ajo y díscolo por díscolo. Si no se machaca el ajo, el caldo nos suena. ¿Cómo no entender tan simple ecuación? this wayward life. Know that, just as platycerium sticks to the trunk, a wayward is a potential fern, as proven by plastidial genetics. A wayward grows and burgeons according to its helplessness, carries your roots, those other things that make you a vertebrate, a marble mortar. I bear it on my back to the top of a hill, I hesitate, let it fall, carry it back to the top again. In these wayward times, I think about giving it other functions. A mortar can shape anything by smashing it, but congruent marble will grant you the shape of an immortalized story of square crockery. Let it fall. Thank you.